will start in a seated position or a kneeling position or anywhere that's sort of comfortable. I'm going to start like this, but um, just anywhere on the mat that you can sit upright, uh, maybe cushions under your bum or a yoga block or anything that makes it feel better for you. Um, you don't have to be sat with your feet like this, they can be further away and you can sit with your legs out in front and just find a position that you can sit in. We're going to start with spine. So all I want you to do from a seated position is think about tucking the pelvis and rounding the back, tucking the chin. Then tilting the pelvis forwards, opening the chest, lifting the eyes. Essentially, this is like doing cat and cow. So if you prefer to do cat and cow instead, you are welcome to. But just think about getting the spine moving. Breathing in and out of your nose. Expanding the chest as you come through, tucking your chin as you round back. Then we're going to add some circles. So think about pressing out through the side body, rolling around, pressing out through the side, chest comes forward in front. And just make these nice big circles. You can change direction. Again, if you prefer to do this in cat and cow, you can do it like that too. So you can, can do this all on, on all fours if sitting cross legged or sitting on your bum isn't comfortable. Keep breathing through your nose, rolling around, just getting your spine moving, notice how it's feeling. We're going to add some lateral reaches. So one hand comes out to the side, opposite arm reaches up and over. We're pressing the seat bones down into the floor and expanding out through the ribs. So try and create as much space through those ribs as you can. You can bend the bottom elbow. And then let's reach up and reach over to the other side. Again, expanding out through the ribs. And as you breathe, feel that length through the ribcage. Draw in through the bottom side, so it's a contraction on one side of the abs or into the ribs, and then lengthening on the opposite side. And now just keep moving side to side. Nice way to just loosen our tension to the lower back and open up through the thoracic. Once more. And then what I like to do from here is literally fold all the way around to the front. And then move to the other side and then fold to the front, go to the other side on the next one, fold around to the front and reach to the side, and then you can open this arm up, big circle, open the chest, so both hands go behind you. You can go onto the fingertips, expand the chest, lift the eyes, and then around to the front again, so just have a big circle, then go the other way, big circle with that shoulder, hands behind, open the chest, reach around, and then back again, last one. And come back up, we're gonna add some twists. Bring one hand behind you, so just behind your bum, onto the fingertips, opposite arm, reaches up. And then you're gonna take it all the way across to the opposite knee. And then look over your back shoulder. Breathing into it, on each exhale, see if you can lead at the chest a bit more, twist a bit deeper. So as you inhale, everything will start to kind of come back to the centre again. And then as you exhale, really pushing the air out of the lungs. Add that twist. Come back to the centre. Other hand goes behind your back. Top arm reaches up, goes over to the opposite knee, and then looking back over that shoulder as well. Stay here for two or three breaths. Inhale. Exhale, twist. Inhale again. Feel it loosen off and then exhale, deepen the stretch. One more breath. And exhale. And then come back to the centre. We're going to move a little bit quicker on those now. So just raise, raise both arms up overhead. Twist to one side. Raise them up again. Twist to the other side. Go for about 10 repetitions, five each side. Go at your own pace. Seeing if you can just rotate a little bit deeper each time. Mm -hmm. 
多分は And then release back to the center. You can bring the legs out in front. And all we're going to do is just circle into the ankles a little bit. So you can sit with your back up against the wall. If that feels more comfortable, lean against something. We're going to clasp the hands around the shin on one side. And then lift the foot up off the floor, nice big circles at the ankle. So as you circle around, try to work into a deep, as deep an end range as you can, and then change direction each time too. So I'm going to go follow the little baby toe all the way down, back up to the top, then follow the big toe all the way down, and just keep alternating side to side. We're going to do this for one minute per side. I have to set my timer, otherwise I will make you do it for three minutes on one side and one on the other. <laughs> Zero awareness of time. So, nice big circles. Keep trying to explore that range, going further and further into it. And we're blocking the knee here from rotating, just while we're holding onto the shin, just below the kneecap. And that way we can really just focus on the ankle. Another 30 seconds. You should start to get quite a bit of heat around the ankle. seconds and then release switch to the other side holding on to the other shin picking the foot up big circles you can always add pauses as well as I pull the toes up engaging the muscles in the shin have a bit of a longer pause there same as I point down just start to build a connection and feel what's going on in those muscles in the lower leg and in the foot. Feel them working. Keep trying to challenge that range that you're moving through. To our lying knee cars so if you have got a resistance band that will come in handy but you also don't have to have one so just a heads up release from there shake the legs out a little bit might just feel good to just stretch into your toes a little bit so if you go to kneeling hook the toes send the bottom towards the heels you can have the hands right out in front and take a bit of weight from the upper body or you can put all of that weight through the toes up from them feeling in that tall tall kneeling position And then what we're going to do is lie on our backs on the mat. I'm going to do 90 seconds to a minute per side on this one. It's such a great stretch for your hamstrings and also really good for your knees um, moving through the full range of motion. So as you lie down, I'll just quickly run through it and then I'll set a timer. If you've got a band, you can hook it around your foot and then obviously it doesn't worry if your leg doesn't come up here. It might be over here somewhere. That's fine. You can also keep a bit of a bend in the knee if you can't straighten it. Um, and all you're going to do with that band around the foot or holding the leg, if you haven't got a band, is bend the knee, extend the knee, and either roll the foot in or roll the foot out. So pick one, bend the knee, extend the knee, pick the other, bend the knee, extend the knee, pick the other. So you're rotating that position of the foot at the top of each rep and maintaining it through that full range and then changing it again at the top, okay? So let's go for about two minutes per side. Um, if you haven't got a band like me, you're holding onto the leg. So extend the leg, move the foot at the top, extend the leg, extend the leg, move the foot. And just go at your own pace. It'll feel better if you just hold it for a few seconds at the top of each rep. Feel that really deep stretch all the way through the back of the leg. And then just 
just keep focusing on your breathing. Every now and then, seeing if you can draw the leg in closer, so raising it higher. And if you think about the muscles on the front of the leg, helping to pull it in. So my hip flexors, my quads are contracting to pull the leg closer to me. Another variation of this is to do it seated, which can feel hard, like more not as accessible, where I can hook onto the thigh, hold the bicep, and did this a couple of weeks ago. So you can also do this version if you want a bit more of a challenge, um, trying to sit up tall. But you may find just lying down feels a lot better for you, especially if you've had a long day as well. So we have another 40 seconds to go on this side. So take your time. Like I said, add some holds at the top of each position as well. Think about engaging the muscles in the front of that hip as you're trying to take that leg further, helping to lengthen out through the hamstrings. Keep breathing through your nose. Another 10 seconds. And then bring that leg down, hug the knee in towards you, just sort of rock about a little bit. I want you to go into half, it's like a half happy baby. <laughs> so I'm going to hold on to the foot with that hand, bend the knee and draw it towards the armpit. And if that doesn't feel accessible and you can't hold the foot, you can hold lower down the leg or the back of the thigh like this, hug it in. Um, you can just hug the knee in like we did first. From there, hug the knee in again. We're going to take it across the body, just gently. The bottom leg that's straight, have the knee and the toes pointing to the ceiling, and then take the top leg across, but try not to just drop and sink into it. So the bottom leg, toes face up, top knee hooks in, and we go across. You can reach the opposite arm away. Look towards the hand, and then release. Shake the legs out. We're going to do the same on the other side. So starting with two minutes, working into our knee cars, stretching into the hamstrings. Whenever you're ready, go for it. So remember, you can hook that resistance band around the foot, hold the top position, and rotate the foot at the top. And as you're holding that top position, we're engaging the muscles in the front of the thigh. You can carry on like that for another minute, or you could do it sitting upright if you did that on the other side. Just be aware of one side if it's a bit more freedom than the other. Take note. Another 15 seconds. And then from there, we're hugging that knee in, lying on your back, so you can hold it here or you can have a go at that single leg happy baby. So you're trying to straighten this bottom leg down on the mat. If you're really tight in the hip flexors, you may find this bottom leg really lifts up too. 
try to straighten that down, pull the other knee towards the hip, or like I said, just hug the leg into where you can. Maybe go for a full happy baby, so we're holding onto both feet, drawing knees towards the armpits, or both ankles, calves, thighs, maybe rock side to side, just a bit of a stretch for the hips and the lower back. And if you straighten that one leg back down again, we're going to hug the knee in, start to grow it across the body, look towards the opposite hand, and we're just going to where we can, not dropping the knee to the floor. So the bottom leg, knee and toes face up, we should feel the stretch into the outer hip and glute. And then release from there, hook both knees in, have a little rock around, little roll around on your lower back. And I'll just do some spine rolls so we can rock up to the shoulders and then up to a seated position. Rocking back again. And then up, not going onto your neck, just a gentle roll. You want to take it a bit further, you could have a go at taking the legs overhead. And just listen to your body, don't force anything. So I'm going to rock back, hold my hips. The weight is on the back of the arms, the triceps, and the shoulders. It's not on the neck. And I can draw the knees towards me. The knees can be bent. Or I could have a go at extending and straightening the legs overhead. And this is known as plow in yoga. So you'll get a really deep stretch all through the back of the body. Keep breathing through the nose. Roll away, back up into a seated position, and we'll come into a tabletop from here. From tabletop, let's stretch and open the wrists a little bit. So fingertips towards the knees, heels of the hands press down, spread your fingers, and you can do little rocks side to side, forwards and back. You could peel the heels of the hands up, stretch more into the fingers as well, and then press them down. See what feels good for you to get that deep stretch to wrist extension. And the closer the hands are to your body, the less pressure. So you don't have to have them all the way out in front and out here somewhere. Find where you feel a good stretch. Let's go on to the backs of the hands as well. Again, just being gentle. Hands can be the side of the body. Arms are straight, turn the armpits and the elbows forward. And then just have a little go at curling the fingers in and out. Or if that's too much, you can skip that out and you can just hold the stretch. Just stretching and lengthening everything on the back of the arm here. Into those wrist extensors. If you want to load it more, you can take the hands out in front, put more weight into that position. So do what feels good for you. And then release, maybe give them a little bit of a rotation. And then let's just go back to tabletop, just checking with the spine again, this time cat cows. So tucking the pelvis, rounding up, tucking the chin, pushing the ground away, tilting your pelvis forwards, working your way up through the spine, opening your chest, lifting your eyes. And just go for a few more reps at your own pace. Rounding out, pushing away. Breathing in and out of the nose. Trying your best to segment through the spine. Rather than move in one unit, think about those little segments of the spine moving one at a time. And don't worry if you obviously, you can't isolate quite as much as that, that's okay. Just have the intention of just moving a bit slower and trying to work first with the lower back, then the mid back, then the upper back. Again, lower back, mid back, upper back. Then once you've done about five repetitions from back into a neutral tabletop position, we're gonna go into a downward dog from here. So back into that toe hook, 
Hands are gonna be shoulder width, spread the fingers. Lift your hips up, knees can be bent. Take the head, looking back between the legs. Turn your biceps to face one another. And then you can have a little go at just pedaling through the feet. So maybe just press one heel down. Don't worry if it doesn't touch the ground. Just hold it there. Rebend it and press the other heel down. Notice how the calves are feeling. Keep breathing in out of your nose. Also opening up through the chest and the shoulders. If this ever feels too much, you could do it with the hands elevated on top of something. So you could elevate your hands on a chair or against the wall. If it's feeling a bit too intense. Squeeze the thigh muscles as you straighten that leg. And then maybe try both legs straightened. Pressing both heels down towards the ground where you can. Lock in the lower ribs, look back between the legs still. Trying to open through the shoulders. And then lower the knees down to the ground. Slide the hands forward to the top of the mat. Open your chest towards the floor. Lift the eyes. So hips stay on top of knees in this position. And you should get a stretch into the front of the shoulders into the chest and the mid back. From there, we're going to come forwards and open the hips towards the ground into an upward dog. So shoulders on top of wrists, try not to let them go too far ahead or feel really intense on the wrist, especially if they're tight. We're going to press through the tops of the legs just gently. You don't have to lift the knees all the way off the floor, but keep some activation through the tops of the feet. Open the chest, lift the eyes. Feel that stretch into the lower belly and the hips. And then from there, go back into downward dog. We're going to do that another four times through. So go downward dog first, hold it here. Any variation, remember you can elevate your hands. Just breathe in the stretch. From there, lower the knees, slide the hands forward over the chest. Travel forwards into your upward dog, opening the hips towards the ground. You can lift the knees off the mat as well if that feels better. Keep squeezing the shoulder blades back towards each other and lift back into downward dog again. Feel free to go at your own pace. So from downward dog to knees down, chest opening towards the ground, lift the eyes. Travel through into an upward dog, opening the front of the hips as well. Back to downward dog, a couple more times through. Trying to find a bit more depth in each position. Really traveling into that breath, not holding it. Get the chest towards the floor. Travel through. So upward dog. Back to downward dog. Last time three. Keep pressing the ground away, locking in the lower ribs, lengthening the backs of the legs. Knees come down, hands forward. Open the chest and the shoulders. into an upward dog. And then back to tabletop. A bit of a wiggle about. We're going to come into a deep lunge position. So right foot comes up outside the right hand, both hands inside that front foot. You could use a yoga block here if you've got one, or books. You could elevate your front foot onto a chair you want to change the platform, the height can help you get into the hips more if you're struggling on ground level. So we're just opening up into the front of the back hip. You might also get it in the hamstrings, the top of the hamstrings on that front leg. We're getting deep into the front hip as well. And you can work your hands down gradually. If they're not there yet, don't force it. You'll, if you're forcing it, you'll probably feel like your back will round a lot more and you can't get this hip open. 
If it's really feeling super tight in the back hip and too much, you could come up into a tall lunge position here and just focus on pressing this back hip forward. So if it feels too much where you are with hands on the floor, give this a go and just feel that stretch into the hip. For those of you that might want to go a bit deeper, you can also play around with lifting and lowering the back knee, but we can start to work the forearms down towards the ground. So it might be that you start with your block on the highest side and you go forearms to the highest side of the block and then try medium side, work your way down gradually to the lowest side, try to keep the chest lifted, so try not to round and punch into it, lift your eyes, and then maybe from here, the block, you can take it away, both forearms down, and breathe. If that's too much right now, you just stay with where you feel a good stretch, that's challenging you, but not so much that you're compensating to do it or struggling to breathe in it. You can stay where you are or from the forearms or the hands, reach the inside hand back and hold the back foot for a deeper stretch into those hip flexors on the back leg look towards the back of the room. You can skip this one out if it's too much. So another 30 seconds here. Stay wherever you can breathe, working into that stretch. If you're doing what I'm doing and holding the back foot, try to really rotate the chest. Look back over that shoulder, we get a stretch for the thoracic too. And then gently release, go back into tabletop. Might feel nice to just do a little upward dog in between. And then come to the other side. So left foot up outside, left hand. And just start by checking in with this position, maybe elevating the hands onto a block. Maybe you're up here again, tucking the bum under, just pressing the back hip forward and feeling that stretch into the hip flexors. Again, you can work the block lower, having your hands in line with that front foot if you can. Just focus on your breathing to start with. Notice where you're feeling that tension in the body. Try to relax and open it up more on the exhales. If you started to work your way onto your forearms on the other side, then start that now as well. So again, we can be on the high side of the block. Maybe you stay there for a few breaths first and then work it down. Keep the chest open, keep the eyes forward. The back knee can be down or lifted. Maybe the forearms find the ground. Stay connected with your breath. Nice long, full, deep inhales. Breathe out of the nose or the mouth. It might feel better to exhale out of the mouth. And you can stay where you are, or if you did this on the other side, we bend the back knee, reach and hold the foot. Look over the back shoulder, adding an extra twist. seconds almost done. Nice full inhales. Rotating further on the exhales. 
and then gently release, let go of that back foot. Step back into tabletop, open the hips towards the floor, a little wiggle, open the chest. We're going into a downward dog, and then from downward dog, you're going to step your right foot between your hands, lower the back knee again, so we're in a lunge. If you've got two yoga blocks, have one under each hand, either side of that front foot. If you haven't got any blocks, you can just place your hands on your hips, come up first. What we want to do is think about the hinging position of the hips. So tilting the pelvis forwards and pushing the bum back, your front knee can bend a little. It doesn't have to be straight, but essentially we're working into the hamstrings from here. So you should feel a stretch into the back of the thigh. Um, if you're quite flexible and hypermobile in the joints, don't force and lock the knee back. You can keep a soft micro bend in it. All we're going to do from here is move back and forth from hips to hamstrings. So hands on hips, hinging over, feeling that stretch into the back of the front leg, and then we come back into that lunge position where we're getting a deep stretch into the hip flexors on that back side. Hold each position for two or three breaths. Don't rush it. Notice how your body's feeling. If it's too much for the back knee, you can put a cushion underneath it, or you could elevate your front foot on top of a chair or a table and just move in and out of it that way. As we open the hips at the front, squeeze the glutes, really press the back hip open, lower ribs draw down. As we go into the hamstrings here, as you hinge, gently push your heel down into the mat to feel a bit more muscle activation into the hamstrings there. Each exhale, seeing if you can go a little bit further, compressing the belly towards the thigh, and then open back up into the hips again. So moving at your own pace, we've got just under a minute on this side. If it feels too much of hands on hips, you can place the hands on the ground. Having them on blocks will take away some of that muscle activation, so it will make it feel a bit easier. Hands on the hips, you have to press through the legs to help balance as well and stabilise that position. There's benefits to both. Do what feels right for you. Keep trying to find a bit more depth. For the hip flexors, you can always shuffle your front foot a bit further forward too. That will start to put more of a stretch into that back hip as that front ankle moves ahead of the knee. Anyway, we'll come out of that one. It's two minutes done. So shake it out. We'll go back to downward dog and we'll switch to the other side. Notice how the backs of the legs feel. So left foot steps through now, back knee goes down. You can come up first. You can also keep your back toes hooked if that helps you balance. Have the um, legs, make sure there's hip width, you're not sort of on a tight rope <laughs> wobbling around. So first of all, yoga blocks can be either side of that front foot, open the back hip towards the ground, or hands can be on the hips. Then we're sending the hips back, tilting the pelvis forwards, working into the hamstrings. Remember we are gently pushing that heel down into the mat, using the breath and on the exhale, trying to tilt the hips tilt at the hips more and get a deeper stretch into the back of the thigh. Eyes lifted, chest open, so you're not tempted to just round and hunch through the spine instead. Stay in each position for two or three breaths. And if you want to deepen that stretch into the back hip flexors again, you can shuffle this front foot further forward when you are into that, into that um, lunge. Engage the glutes, open the hip flexors. Another 30 seconds. Nice 
When you're ready, bring yourself back out to the tabletop. And we're going to bring ourselves into a frog stretch from here. So stretch and open into the inner thighs and the groin. So a couple of minutes in this position. You might want two cushions, one to go onto each knee. And we're gonna take the knees wide. Then from that wide knee position, we want the ankles behind the knees, inner edges of your feet are on the ground. So we can be on the hands, we can be on the forearms, you can use blocks. And the idea here is that you're feeling that stretch into the inner thighs, taking the knees as wide as they can go, breathing in and out the nose. You can challenge it by coming up higher and even seeing, can you support yourself here without using your hands, engaging the inner thighs, so gripping the ground between the legs, building a bit more strength there into the hips, and then coming back down. So you could move between those two positions, relaxing more into it a bit more passively here, and then working your way up into more of an active hold. If the active hold at the top feels impossible, then instead what you can have a, do have a go at doing is gripping the ground between your knees. So imagine you're closing your knees like a book, so you'll feel the inner thighs activate and engage, hold it for five or 10 seconds and then relax. And as you relax, maybe you might start to find you can access a bit more range and take the legs wider. So either of those options. Try to achieve at least five isometric contractions, holding each one anywhere from five seconds, maybe even increasing it gradually up to say 30 seconds. And you don't have to relax for the same amount of time. I might squeeze the ground for five, four, three, two, one, and then relax into the stretch. I might stay there for 20, 30 seconds before I do my next one, so you don't have to rush from one to the other. Maybe test coming up again. Might just get to the fingertips. through the hands, gently shuffle the knees in. You might just go into another upward dog just to stretch the front of the hips again. Open the chest, maybe rock about side to side. And then all we're going to do is come back to a seated position, so you cross the ankles, sit onto your bum. And just finish with a bit of a chest, shoulder opener, and then the option to add a reach or even go towards a sort of full bridge. So to begin with, just have fingertips facing back. They can be about shoulder width. You can bring them closer together if you want to deepen the stretch, if you're a bit more flexible. And then open the chest, squeeze the shoulders back, send the bum away. So we're getting stretched into the front of the chest and the shoulders. So you're gonna stay here for up to a minute. If it gets too much at any point, just move back out or take the load off a little bit. Grip through the fingers to help protect your elbows as well. You can have bent legs or straight legs. Gradually you can work deeper if your body allows. Try not to punch and round into it. Try and keep the chest open. This is one particular position you might find that you're really tight in. It's really common. Um, for people to be tight in shoulder extension, it's quite rare that you find people working into shoulder extension. So this is a really good stretch to work into that range and open it up. We also want to always make sure that we're strengthening it too. So this is just more of a stretch than it is strength work, but it will help you to open up that range more, especially if you've been sat um, at a desk, punched up a lot. So you can come back out of that one, that's a full minute done, maybe shake the arms out a little bit. You can either go back into it or have a little go at lifting the hips up into a reverse tabletop, keeping the hands shoulder width. And you might just move in and out of that position. This will also help build more strength. If you want to take it further, we're going to go for a single arm reach into reverse tabletop. So I'm going to come up first, take one arm off the floor. So if you already feel unstable, you're probably not ready to take it further. So it might just be getting used to pressing through one shoulder. I'm going to open up this armpit so externally rotate and then reach up and overhead. 
as much as I can. We're opening the hips here too. So if the hip flexors are tight, you might find your hips are quite low and then you're struggling to, to really bridge up. So it won't necessarily all be from the shoulders. Come down, switch to the other side. And then lower. If you want the challenge, we can go into a full bridge. So you just make sure that your shoulders are feeling good for it. You should know already if that's feeling super tight and you're not quite there for the, um, not feeling quite ready for the, the full bridge. So in which case, we can just go into more of a yoga sort of camel pose. And you can do this with hips pressed against a wall. So if you literally position yourself face to wall, hips pressed forward, hands to the lower back, open your chest so this is one option for two and if you think about the hips pressing into, into the wall it will make you stretch into the upper back more than if you're prone to arching the lower back so here i can place my hands on yoga blocks or i can reach for the heels and open this way so that's one option you can just stick with the reverse tabletop lifts or the final the final one is the full bridge and for that just listen to your body don't force anything Lift the hips to shoulder bridge first. Hands go either side of the ears. Spread the fingers. Press through the legs, press through the arms. Push all the way up. Looking, trying to look through the shoulders and through the window. Engage the glutes, feel the hips bridge up. Open the chest, lower ribs draw down. And then when you're ready, you can come out and maybe just finish with the flexion through the spine to stretch that out. So we can go knees into chest. You can rock to the shoulders, press through the backs of the arms, knees towards your face, or straight legs overhead. See how that's feeling again. Stay here and breathe for about five breaths. Or if you need to come out sooner, you can just roll your way down onto the mat, find a relaxing position, maybe feet together, knees open and palms up, and straight legs, hands can be on the belly, just somewhere that's comfortable. Close your eyes, relax your jaw, soften those facial muscles, and just breathe gently. Soft inhales and exhales. See if you can lengthen your exhales. And as you do, just think about the whole body sinking into the ground. Everything is just melting into the mat. Notice the breath going to the point that you can almost no longer hear it. So really trying to just let it soften, feeling calm and relaxed. Feel the rib cage rise and fall as you breathe. Notice how your body feels now compared to at the beginning of this session. Notice how it feels tomorrow as well. Just when you're going about your day. When you feel ready to, you can just bring yourself back up. If you don't want to, you don't have to. You can just stop this recording and then just stay where you are. Um, otherwise, when we go for a full body stretch, and then bring yourself up into a seated position in your own time. So 
well done thank you very much i hope you feel a lot better for that and i will see you again for another mobility session next